Not a human being. Oh God. This game contains graphic scenes of violence. There's y'all warning. <laughs> in this game, in the game, players can easily die. <coughs> oh my God. Choked on a burp. If you encounter a murderer, please call the police first. It's unrealistic to develop a romantic relationship with the murderer. This is a romance game. There's y'all warning. Hi, welcome to Bloody Painter Dating Sim. Um, if you're new here, hi, I'm Boya. I play a variety of games. Uh, I gotta turn like stuff down, sound effects and stuff. Gotta go down a little bit. The voice can stay up. The speed is fine. I'll just be everything's fine. Uh, yeah. If you're new here, hi. I hope you have a fantastic day. And uh, yeah. Let's get started. This game has four endings, by the way. Oh my god. Oh my god. I should have turned the sound effects down way more. And it's voice acted. <laughs> so, um, I hope you consider liking, subscribing, and stuff. I'm not having a very good day. I just feel blah today. And I don't want to bring that out in this video. So, we're not going to talk about it. Not because I don't want to tell you guys, but I just want to let you guys know if I sound weird, I sound different. That's simply because. I am PMSing hard. <sighs> With a severe headache, you wake up in an unfamiliar place. Are you serious? I am so sorry I had to wait till the man disappeared for a little bit. I might do some jump cuts so you guys don't have to hear that, but yeah. Um, I read this part already. Let's keep going. As you touch the bruise on the back of your head, it seems... You were hit with something heavy before you lost consciousness. A heavy iron chain tied around your feet. Someone has trapped you here. You try to remember what happened before you lost consciousness, but you can't recall anything. Let's investigate the surroundings first. All right, the wall. The room is surrounded by four walls without any windows. It's weirdly cleaned up and no ashes or sand can be seen. Looks like a prison built by a germaphobe. Oh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a germaphobe. I mean, I'm kind of a germaphobe, not severe. Like there are some people that seriously bubble wrap their house top to bottom. I'm not that type of germaphobe, but I'm not like a handshaker at all for a reason. I'll give you a quick hug, but that's about it. Where to investigate next? Okay. Cell phone, I guess? I mean, we should have, we should have did that first. No signal. I might be in a remote place or underground. Uh-oh. Now that's where it can get tricky, because if we're underground, y'all already know. Where to investigate next? Okay. The mattress that we're laying on. There's a mattress on the floor. The mattress feels really hard to lie on. Okay, we're to investigate next. I hope we're not on a time limit either. There are four endings and there are five bad endings. As y'all know, when there's multiple bad endings, I try to go for all the good endings. So I am not gonna try to get any of the bad endings, but if I get a bad ending, it's not a bad thing. So just bear with me. Let's look at our meal that we got. Near the door, there is a serving of spaghetti with tomato sauce and a bottle of water. Also, a round plastic fork that's completely harmless was thoughtfully attached. Okay. It's still warm. It feels like it was sent here not long ago. Where to investigate next? Uh, we investigate the middle of the door. You peek through the keyhole, but you see nothing outside. I wonder where I am. Where to investigate next? in the investigation yeah i think we did as best we could unless we could unless we could multiple like click on the the investigation stuff multiple times and they give us different stuff that's the only thing i could think of what's the next move uh call for help listen let's listen first before we just start screaming because you never know and we might alert the person that kidnapped us you can't hear any sound other than your own breathing the soundproofing in this room seems particularly good. Okay. Um. Knock over the meal. Sleep. Listen. Let's just listen. 
Oh wait, we already listened. Okay, well at least we know now that uh, nothing will happen. I don't want to knock over the meal because because the place is soundproof. I don't want to like draw in you know rats or anything. So let's uh let's call for help. Okay, nobody answers. Okay. I don't want to knock over the meal. Because if you knock over the I don't know. Let's just sleep. Let's just go to bed. Are you sure? There are four endings, like I said. So there may be some ending where I eat the meal and it kills me. You lay on the bed. You try to sleep under this condition. Maybe it's the fatigue caused by nervousness, but you still fall asleep. Sleepy, sleepy. Door opens. You open your eyes after hearing some noises. Oh, hi, sir. Uh, can I hide the picture? Uh, I'm sure there's a way to hide it. Uh, no, no. Go back. Can we go back? Oh, oh. history. So I can read that, please. You open your eyes hearing some noise. A tall man wearing a mask is squatting on the ground and looking at you with his head tilted okay that's what it said okay back to game um give me a second you guys so i accidentally skipped this part too so sorry you guys you remain silent as if he's sizing up his prey uh -oh. i'm gonna stop clicking buttons now because the more i click buttons the more <laughs> things start happening <laughs> and i'm still clicking buttons too which is okay well we're, we're stopping now back to game he points to the plate on the floor, like indicating that you should finish your meal quickly. Thinking that the strange man might have poisoned the meal, you shake your head in fear. Hmm. Oh God. <sighs> oh my God, okay. <laughs> Don't breathe like that, sir. You're, this is the wrong person to be breathing like that around. <laughs> Seeing you have no intentions of eating, he looks quite distressed. You can't die. Not now. He slowly speaks with a deep and steady voice. The freezer is full. Oh. You're one of thems. You're gonna kill me. You're gonna eat me. I just, look, I just dealt with a cannibal not too long ago. I don't want to deal with another one. Like, like, come on, sir. What does that mean? The freezer is full. And there's no space for more. Okay. Seven days. Seven? He pauses and thinks. There won't be space until seven days later. Okay, so all we gotta do is just starve ourselves out and die sooner. <laughs> and we don't have to deal with this. Look, that's the plan. Or make him fall in love with all this lusciousness over here. Okay. Hold on. We got options. We got options. If you die now, you'll rot. What do you mean? So I only have seven days left to live? He nods and walks out the door. Wait. You can't just leave me here like this. Please. Your cries can't stop the door from closing. Day, one, night. Let's investigate the surroundings first, okay? Let's look at the door. You peek outside the keyhole. You can see the shadow of the man walking around. Seems too busy with something. What is he doing? Hmm. Let's investigate the mat. No, 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 no. Oh, I thought the, it was investigate the mattress to sleep. Okay, let's look at the meal. A bread and a bowl of water. A bottle of water. I was going to say a bowl of water, Lord. A bottle of water. A bottle of water. Let's go to bed. We're choosing not to sleep. I mean, choose not to eat. Maybe we'll get an ending where we die, I guess. Please try to improve your survival rate within seven days. Day two morning let's investigate and look around door you check the keyhole oh god you seem to see something what is that i have no idea what that is like i'm looking but 
like I don't know maybe I'm uh, an eyeball a head inside of something I don't know you see that there is a vague figure at the end of the door um, observe quickly hush phone I'm busy I'm trying to survive for seven days you sense something wrong and realize what that is after narrowing your eyes oh that is an artwork made of the human body not a human being oh god hey you You hear the door open. You slowly push the door, and there's no trace of the strange man. I wouldn't trust it. First, you go into the room with the large freezer, sink, and operating table. Then, you open another heavy door. Ah. Oh. oh, I'm gonna get eaten. Oh, he's gonna turn me into art. I mean, I'm already art like this. Like, I'll pose however you want. You find yourself in a room full of glass display jars. The jars are all filled with specimens made from human body parts. It's like you're in an art museum. Could it be that he wanted to freeze me as material for a specimen artwork? You're thinking. You seen this scene run away admire the artwork hmm I promise this is for the content I would never do this I'd be so freaking horrified I would run away let's admire the artwork <laughs> I'm so, I always do the wrong thing first y'all know that I never get ending one ever you look around and admire his work with relish interesting ah uh, great Dang it, I, I hit the wrong button again. Go back. Okay, thank you. You look at them for 15 minutes straight. And then he said, interesting. You hear a voice coming from the corner. Oh, hi, you. It turns out the man has been watching you from the blind spot behind the glass cabinet. I like them. They're so beautiful. The man goes silent with his head tilted for a couple of seconds after hearing your comment. He seems to be thinking about something. Don't you consider it cruel or bloodthirsty to them? Um, I consider it whatever you want it to be. No, I feel nothing at all. You're such a weirdo. I'm the weirdo? Okay, all right. You got me there. I'm the weirdo. But do you like it? That's all I want to know. You think, aren't you talking about yourself? After you had a tour of the display room, he locks you back in the small room you were in. You go to sleep to end the day. You sur <laughs> your survival rate increases. Great. Lovely. Day three, night. Until noon, you don't see breakfast or lunch being delivered. You're already starving. You're waiting for him to bring dinner, but what you get is not dinner, okay? Instead, you hear the door was opened. A light shines through the crack of the half-open door, looking like an intriguing invitation. You open the door and walk into the light. You first arrive at the room with the operating table outside of the door. But this time, the operating table is not empty. There's a defrost human corpse on it. The man pops out of nowhere. He unties the iron chains from your feet and hands the surgical knife in his hand to you. First. Okay. Where do you think the first cut should be? Uh-oh. The voice tone sounds cold, like the kind of teacher who gives students hard questions on purpose. 
Does he expect? Is he trying to see if I'm like him? Is that what the? Is that what it is? A uh, stab the cords. Attack him with the surgical knife. Can't do it. Uh. Ah, uh, there's no good options here. If they told me to choose an actual place to cut at, I would have probably been like, you know, you start from the chest down, like, or from the like top of the collarbone down. That is just what I would have chose personally, not because of my medical background or anything like that. It's just because if he's making them into artwork, I'm just saying. Uh, uh stab the corpse. Maybe beautiful work always comes with some sacrifices. Without hesitation, you stab the abdomen of the corpse with the knife. But due to lack of professionalism, the lines you cut are crooked and ugly. Uh-oh. Uh, ew. Ah. Oh. No, don't guide me. This is not a romantic thing. And... This is when he gets close behind your back and holds your hands. You're both holding the surgical knife like you two are cutting a cake together. With his hands, the line you cut becomes smooth and clean. No, this is not. No, <laughs> this is this is not romantic. I'm terrified right now. I think I feel like something's going to happen. That's what it feels like. You can smell an ocean perfume on him due to how close you are. It seems to be sprayed to cover up the smell from- Oh my god. I'm gonna be sick. This is why I, at one point years ago, years, years, years ago, like when I was like in my 20s, like early 20s, like 21, 22, um, I heard about how much money and stuff that uh people who work in um in funeral homes make you know doing the um bombing of bodies and stuff like that and i was like oh i would love to make that much money and then i found out what they have to do like just doing some research online i found out all the stuff you have to do to make those bodies look normal and it's just uh i can't you can feel his warmth with your back, but his fingers are a little cold. You focus on cutting the corpse, and your hands keep moving under his lead. He could have killed you or ignored you, but he didn't. You start to speculate on the purpose of his behaviors. Could it be that he wants someone who could ignore the cruelty and progress and understand him? Hmm. Maybe. You think? I have like something on my eyelash and it won't go away. After the happy creative time ends, you are locked in the room you were in. You go to sleep to end the day. So we're doing okay. This is like day five. Oh no, this is day four. Day four, noon. I don't know if we've eaten yet. She hasn't said we've eaten yet. Until noon, you don't see breakfast or lunch being delivered. You're already starving. You notice that something is shining in the corner. Hello? A key. It seems like the man accidentally dropped it last night. You open the door with the key. Look, we already going down this like horrible path of like, I guess either becoming his assistant or girlfriend or whatever the case may be. We might as well just keep going. You go past the operating table where you two spent creative time together <laughs> last night. That's not that's what you call creative time? The display room. Then you discover that there are unnatural, uneven marks from one wall to the corner. <coughs> you find a trapdoor. After pushing the trapdoor, you see a normal basement storage room. Okay? At the corner of the storage room, you see a stair that goes up. It turns out that this is really an underground secret room. Hidden layer by layer with trap door, you wonder the sound escalation is so good. You walk up the stairs and see a heavy wooden board. You push it hard. 
What catches your eye is the interior of the cozy cabin. Then you realize the heavy wooden board you've just pushed is the back of a bookcase. Of course he has a trap door behind a bookcase. Why wouldn't he be one of those people that have a trap door behind a bookcase, of course? You look around and find that there are insect specimens everywhere in the cabin, and there is also a reindeer head specimen hanging on the wall. Interesting that they, I mean, you could just say, but we get it. We all get it. We understand. Then you walk into the living room. Oh, he's adorable. Without the mask and stuff on, he's kind of cute. Oh, no, don't fall for the, mm, don't fall for the killer. He's a bad guy. You see a young man with a handsome face and pale skin lying on the sofa. The ocean scented perfume and the faint smell of formalin <laughs> emanates from his body. Ew. It's him. He's the masked man who kidnapped you, but he is not wearing the mask at this time. He is sleeping. His sleeping face has a ferocious expression. His neck is sweating and he seems to be trembling. It looks like he's sick. Oh no. At this time, you decide to take this opportunity to escape, stay and take care of him. Of course, of course, boy, it would. You can't bear to leave him alone. So you reach out and touch his forehead. Whoa, you're hot. Sorry, I double clicked. You try to find something that can cool him off. Let's investigate, okay? Uh, the kitchen, of course. The kitchen is spotlessly clean. Uh, the fridge? Maybe he has an ice pack in the fridge. There are some ice cubes in it. These can cool down his body temperature, okay? Uh, the cabinet? Find some clean towels in the kitchen cabinet, okay? I can soak the towels in ice water and place it on the patient's forehead to cool them down. Okay. In the investigation, yeah. I, we found what we need it. The living room? The living room is spotlessly clean. Where to investigate next? Uh, the sofa. Um, I don't want to look at the dead bodies. Uh, the photo frame. Sure. There's a photo frame on the shelf. It's a photo of him standing at the entrance of the jurisdictional mental hospital with the man in the doctor robe. We're to investigate next. Um, I guess we can, the man, let's investigate the man. Okay, so we are saying the same thing. He seems to be in pain. He's still having a fever. We're to investigate next, in investigation, in investigation. Next time, I'll go through everything, but I just don't think any of it's going to say anything. We were just looking for something to cool him down. You return to the living room, wringing out the excess water from the towel soaked in ice water and place it on his forehead. His ferocious expression gradually softens. Oh, he looks so cute. You once again notice his fair skin and long eyelashes and his softly curly black hair. If you don't say he is a murderer, his sleeping face looks very harmless now. Oh, after a while. <laughs> oh, he looks so frightened that we're here. He wakes up to the scent of your brewing cocoa and sits up on the couch. He looks a little shocked. <laughs> He looks around quickly and seems to understand what's going on. Why are you doing this? I want to ask myself that too. You saw me faint and didn't choose to run away. Hmm. You're such a weirdo. You keep calling me that, but you're the one with dead bodies in your basement. I'm just saying. Is there anyone weirder than you in this house? You can't help but itch at him. You guys can read the word. You seem to see in the corner of his mouth raising slightly for a few seconds, and the atmosphere between you relaxes. Well, at least he's smiling at us. That's the, I mean, that's the good thing, right? 
He doesn't drink the cocoa you brew for him. It seems that he's still a little wary of you. Can you tell me who you are? Bloody Painter. That's the name they gave me for my modus operandi. Okay. What's your real name? Please tell me it's like Jason, Steven, Kevin, something like that. Something normal. If you find it difficult to pronounce, you can call me BP. Okay, BP's fine. Even though what he told you was just a nickname, at least you know how to call him now. After a brief conversation on the sofa, he does not lock you back in the underground secret room. Perhaps staying to take care of him when he fell ill was enough to prove that you won't run away. You get up from the sofa and continue to look at the specimen's decorations in the living room. He sits on the sofa, crossing his legs, picks up a book, and starts reading. By the way, you better not try to escape. I had ample time. I had so much time of you being asleep, and I went in your kitchen and made you hot cocoa and put an ice cold towel on your head while you were sick. You better thank me I didn't leave. You could have died. There are traps all around the cabin, and only I know how to get in and out safely. Okay. You sit on the sofa. Soon, a wave of sleepiness comes over you. <coughs> Today you fall asleep on the sofa in the living room, not in a cold underground secret room. Your survival rate has increased. Okay. Day five. Two more days. I'm still going to go get every ending. This should just be broken up in parts. You see him busy cleaning in and out of the house early in the morning. I'll come help too. After finishing speaking, you pick up the rag and bucket and join the cleaning. But you can't really see where this almost spotless house needs to be clean. Yeah, I mean, what needs to be clean? You're just taking a clean, wet rag and wiping it on a clean cabinet. Do you usually love cleaning this much? It would soon be covered with a layer of dust. Okay. Alright. It must be clean. Like this one or two times a week. Otherwise it would be covered in a layer of dust. Although he doesn't talk much, his tone and voice gives you a gentle feeling and don't make you feel nervous. I mean, I'm, I feel nervous. You climb up the short ladder and wipe the high cabinets with a rag. <laughs> of course he does. Suddenly, a cockroach crawls out from the crack in the cabinet. Oh, God. You are so frightened that you lose your balance and fall backwards. You close your eyes. But... What you get is not a pain or falling on the ground, but a warm feeling. Oh, hi. <laughs> Thank you for catching me. <laughs> you open your eyes and find that he's holding you like you're a princess. He catches you with the same old cold expression on his face. Are you all right? <laughs> yeah. Perhaps to resolve the awkwardness, he asks. Is, I'm alright. It, it's just a cockroach. Hearing the word cockroach, he puts you down. Oh no, don't tell me you're scared of buggies too. I'm scared of buggies so badly. He takes two steps back from the cabinet you just wiped and then says calmly, Don't come near here yet. Uh, okay. Why? It's dangerous. Okay. You can't help but chuckle at the thought of a murderer being afraid of cockroaches. Fine, whatever you say. Girl, are you stupid? I'm scared of cockroaches. Their interaction just now makes you feel a little warm from the cold murderer. At least you see more of his reaction and expressions. This is the rare relaxation that you felt in these tense days. He could have let you fall off the ladder, but he rushes over to catch you. 
Somehow you feel that after these few days of getting along, maybe now you both have different ideas about each other than you originally had. It was only a clear relationship between a murderer who wanted to hunt and a prey who was trying to escape. But now it was an extra layer of friendship causing the interaction between you two to have an indescribable sense of dishonest. Okay, well at least we're getting somewhere in the relationship. Just when you pick up the old newspaper and prepare to wipe the windows, you find a police car parked on the road in the distance. They have given me so many chances to escape. <laughs> That's the funny part. And, I, and I'm still here. Two police officers get out of the car and keep looking towards the cabin. Okay. At some point, BP is already behind you looking out the window with you. Wait for a second. And then he walks out the door and talks to the police officers. Again, we could get Is there out. anything I can help you with? Are you Mr. Otis? Yes, I am. Have you ever seen these people around here? The police officer takes out some photos of his from his pocket. Blah, excuse me. Have these people committed a crime and are running away? The way he says that is just like, you're, you're the killer. We know you're the killer. He's the killer. No, these people are missing people around this area. I haven't seen them before, but wolves and bears often appear around here. Can we check out your cabin? Yes, come in. BP behaves very kindly and politely. After speaking, he leads the way for the police officers. Uh-oh. Please, follow my footsteps. I placed some traps near the cabin to protect against wild wolves and bears. You don't want to step on them. The police officer enters the house and sees you. Hello, this is... An old friend who came to visit me recently. You greet the police officers with a smile and nod. I'm about to snitch on him. <laughs> Listen, we could get out right now. There is nothing stopping us. Ugh, that man is back with the lawnmower. One second, you guys. All right, I think he's gone. At the same time, a police officer quickly looks through the missing person's photos and hands. Then, he puts the photo back into his pockets. It seems that your disappearance has not been discovered by anyone yet, okay? After searching around, the police find nothing unusual and leave. His trust in you increases. Today you still sleep on the couch in the living room instead of in the cold basement. Okay, we got some trust established. Half asleep, you hear the sound of someone approaching. Oh, hello. <laughs> Is this a nighttime, uh, quickie thing? Cause it, no? Oh, sorry. I, I, I thought that's what this was. I, I apologize. When you noticed it, the person seemed to be very close to you. Sorry, I accidentally skipped it. It says, uh, when you notice it, the person seems to be very close to you. You pretend to be asleep and the person just looks at your sleeping face quietly. Sorry, you guys. The man stretches out his hand and takes it back just as he was about to touch your hair. Just... He turns around and leaves. Oh, don't, please. You don't have to leave again. We... No? Oh, all right, okay. Hmm? Day six, morning. I have, y'all can say what y'all want about me on how I made my way out of the basement, how I escaped, but I made my way out of the basement without having to mutilate, brutally beat somebody or anything like that. I have just been cleaning the house and being nice and sweet. So y'all can say whatever y'all want about Voya, but guess who made it out of the basement? Y'all gonna be still sleeping in the basement. Or y'all gonna run out there and step on those traps. That would be y'all. See, you gotta, you gotta think. Let me, let me give y'all some survival stuff. See, you earn his trust. And then 
And of course, he's cute, so you have some stuff to lean on. Not because, listen, not because you're leaning on it because you think like, oh man, I'm gonna get away with this. You're leaning on it, or like, oh, I'm a data killer. You're leaning on it simply because, okay, if I earn his trust, then, you know, he'll, you know, be this, like, he'll be warm to me. He'll be nice to me. He'll give me more freedom. The more freedom I get, the more likely it is I'll get out of here. And yes, my escape route might take longer but y'all gonna be stuck in the basement <laughs> or y'all gonna run out there and step on the traps and i will have waited weeks and weeks and months and years or whatever and then i would have hit the boots and got i would have been gone you see him busy in the kitchen for a while dang it i hit the skip button again and that looks delicious all it said was that um then breakfast is served in front of you which it looks delicious it looks it looks divine it looks very good there's a piece of toast with just the perfect crispiness on the large round plate a poached egg on top of the toast and some lettuce okay so he, he, he really he really hooked me up thank you the plating looks delicious you drink a cup of freshly brewed hot cocoa I, I would thought that was coffee, but you know, whatever. The cutlery he gives you is still a round plastic fork with no offensive features. You sit at the dining table and start eating while he sits on the chair opposite of you and flips through a book. It's still snowing outside and listening to the squeaking around the fireplace, the atmosphere of the cabinet is practically comfortable. As long as you ignore the fact that you are in the same room with the murderer who kidnapped you, everything is really relaxing. You look at him who is full of mysteries and some questions arise in your mind. You decide to ask loudly, ask carefully. Can I ask you a question? What is it? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, what book do you usually read? Usually, I would read some anatomy and taxidermy books, but today is different. Okay. What are you reading today? The Truman Show. Where people, where the guy he lived a happy life, and then he finds out he's stuck in a tv show or something like that i don't i don't i don't i didn't watch the truman show so i don't know but y'all let me know if i'm right hmm what is the book like the whole world that the protagonist lives in including himself is all just someone's creation everything that happens is watched by the audience and there is no privacy at all oh okay but he is completely unaware that he is in such a large theater. Very interesting. Very ridiculous, right? I can't imagine this to happen in reality or to me. If our world was like the Truman Show, how would the audience view the current situation? Um exciting trust me i know there's gonna be people out there like oh my god it's so exciting he's a killer because i know look i'm gonna say one title of a tv show that i never understood why people watch because it's simply about a man that's murdering people and then y'all understand dexter enough said i don't understand why y'all watch that show excited why they may be attracted by your charm and want to be liked by you uh oh. Incomprehensible. <laughs> but what a bunch of weirdos with good taste. Uh, uh, so his fingers are so long. <sighs> Ren, you're going to have to step aside because them fingers might do some work. It's hard to tell from his poker face whether he's seriously boasting or joking. Okay. Uh. uh I guess we can go in line. Let's go ahead and go in line. You pick up the book next to you and start flipping through. 
It's a book about a possibility of having a completely opposite version of yourself in a parallel world. If there's a complete opposite version of you, what do you think it would be like? Oh, that book. Let me think. I press Probably the a guy wearing a burgundy coat and always having a smile on his face. Oh. Why is it a burgundy coat? Because I like blue. If he is the opposite of me, he should like red, right? I mean, yeah, if he's the opposite. I mean, my favorite color is blue, so. Hey, my favorite color is blue. His favorite color is blue. Okay, all right. See, me and BP got something in common. Okay. What? I can't really see the words because I don't have my glasses on and the words are extremely small on my screen for some reason. What work are you going to use me for? I think that's what it says. You asked bravely. He looks up at you for a moment. I was going to make you into some kind of doll at first. Your eyes are beautiful, but if they are left alone, they will become rotten and sunken. So I would like to dig your eyes out and put them in a glass jar and soak them in formalin to preserve them. I said formalin, so he was right, formalin, the first time. Thank, I, I apologize, because now that I'm looking, like, like actually looking at the word, I see where I was wrong at, and I'm stupid. But that's okay, mistakes were made. Let's move on from the mistake. Glass beads will be placed in the empty eye sockets to replace the eyes. You look very pleasing to the eye. So I would also like to keep the head intact. Uh, thanks for the compliment. You're welcome. Why did he say at first? Has his mind changed? You're curious, but you don't have the guts to ask any further. Okay, let's move on. Uh, about the potted plant. I saw many potted plants on the shelves in the living room. But why were they all withered? I have tried my best. I don't know why they always die. Hmm. Don't got a green thumb? Me neither. In the conversation. Day six, noon. So we're still in day six. It's noontime. To thank you for making breakfast for me today, let me make lunch in return. Uh-oh. He frowns at you with an expression like, are you out of your mind? Don't worry. You said that there are traps outside the house. Only you know how to get in and out normally. Even if I resist you with the knife, I can't escape. Okay, but I'll keep an eye on you. Don't try anything stupid. See, I'm going to earn his trust and get out. Great. As for what to cook, then the ingredients, well, a bad idea flashes through your head and curiosity makes you ax. You do, you eat human flesh? No. Why would I do that? Oh, thank God. No more cannibals, thank you. I just use human bodies as materials for making art, and I never think about eating them. Good. I thought you murders all had some degree of cannibalism. Let's put it this way. Do you eat paint and painting tools? <laughs> I mean, you got a point. Just because I kill people to use as materials to make works doesn't mean I will eat them. Sorry, BP. Also, I'm different from those who have fun committing a crime and kill purely for the sake of killing. Uh, Don't confuse me with that kind of unprincipled guy. Sorry, you guys. I thought he was done talking, but he wasn't. I wouldn't do anything unless necessary. Okay. You are here only because you witnessed the crime scene. I see. After hearing this, you decide to... Uh... <laughs> cook a common dish. You look at the ingredients in the refrigerator... There are eggs, tomatoes, white rice, 
and some curry powder on the shell. Okay, I've decided. You turn on the oven and start to cook. BP watches the entire production process. Rather than worrying about you escaping, he's more worried about you blowing up the kitchen. Soon after, a normal curry omelet rice was served. There's nothing wrong. I see nothing wrong with it. Looks good. <sighs> he stares at the omelet rice without saying a word. Don't worry, there's no poison. Weren't you watching me the whole process? He starts to move after you finish speaking. He takes a spoonful of the omelet rice and puts it in his mouth. Is it good or nasty? What do you think? It's surprisingly quite delicious. Oh, yay! So we can cook. Oh, thank God, because I'm so sick of pretty girls in visual novels that just be messing it up in the kitchen. Hmm? What's wrong? Nothing. It's just that no one has cooked for me for a long time. I can make you more if you like. You had a fairly pleasant afternoon. Day six. Okay. All right. Hey. Hey. Huh? You were woken up from your sleep by the man. Um. His face is close to you, and his blue eyes are staring at you. Hmm? What's wrong? You sit up on the couch and rub your eyes. Got, Got to go. Okay, he, he was going to talk. Sorry, BP. Got to go? I've noticed something unusual about the number of police cars patrolling nearby recently. Okay. They must have some relevant evidence and are doubting it. It is very likely there is an ambush outside. So are we leaving or are you kicking me out? It's snowing heavily outside now, and I think it's time to leave now. Come with me or not, it's your choice. Aww. So we get a cho- Wait, it's letting me save? Wait, I didn't do that. I- 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 <gasps> Go with him! Of course! What do you want me to do? I'm fine with both choices, but I need you to look at me in my eyes and tell me. What do you prefer me to do? He stares at your eyes. I prefer. He hesitates to speak and looks away. Come on, BP, tell me. <laughs> looks like he's thinking about something. Uh, hold his hand. Hold his hand. Oh, oh, that caught me off guard. Your behavior makes him a little panic. He doesn't seem to be good at this kind of situation. You notice that his ears are flushed, and this unexpected reaction makes you want to tease him a little bit. What do you prefer me to do? I prefer. After a moment of silence, he slowly speaks. Let you come with me. Aww. Okay. He tries hard to look at you in the eyes and speaks his thoughts. We'll set off early tomorrow morning. Okay, day seven. Follow my footsteps. Okay. He followed the shoe prints he leaves on the snow and finally succeed in avoiding the many traps around the cabin. Just as you were walking through the forest, you hear movement behind you. Freeze! In the snowstorm, several policemen were... <laughs> Lying in the ambush chase after you. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to get away, I think. You ignore them and keep running forward. Bang! A gunshot shoots across the sky and you feel pain in your left calf. You were shot. Oh my God. He turns and looks at you as if he's considering whether to leave you. Run. You yell at him. But he approaches you. He holds you in his arms. You feel warmth on your forehead. <gasps> oh my god! He kisses your forehead. Yay! You feel the time freezes at this moment. 
The kiss is almost like a goodbye. Then he leaves you and runs forward, disappearing into the heavy storm. You were later taken back to the police for questioning. You say throughout the process that you were a victim. On that note, you were lying. You don't reveal any unnecessary details. Since there's no relevant evidence to prove that you are an accomplice, the police can only release you after a long period of interrogation. I think this was the best thing to happen because I still got out. I know some of y'all are like, oh, Boya is just so hooked on men. But guess what? I was thinking the whole time of how to get out. And I did. After that, we're back at home. See, oh, two years have passed. Y'all can thank me later. Y'all always talking about, oh, I'm boy crazy on visual novels and stuff. But y'all, y'all vasty too. And that's Voya nasty, by the way. Y'all some vasty people, y'all. So, and trust me when I said I got a kiss out of this. I got to hold his hand and everything. And guess what? I didn't have to kill a person. I didn't have to do anything bad. And I still got out. And it's been two years since I've been released. I could have uprooted my whole life and disappeared. Now you live in a cheap little apartment. You live an ordinary life as if what happened two years ago never happened. Today is Halloween and every household nearby has put some thought into making decorations. Oh, that's so sweet. It's close to Halloween here too. But for you, it's just another day at work. When you return to your apartment after getting off of work in the evening, the strange thing is that as soon as you open the door, you feel a gust of wind. You remember that you closed the window before going out. Just when you were about to close the window. <gasps> and he gave me a rose! <laughs> I needed this. I had felt bad all day. You find a gift left by someone on the table next to the windowsill. A red rose. You don't know why, but you have a feeling that BP has been here. Every Halloween after that, you receive a rose at your residence. It's like a once a year greeting. Aww. Who got out? Who got out? Go ahead, praise me in the comment section who got out. Although he says nothing, the rose seems to tell everything. Although you have certain similarities, you are two people from different worlds after all. Perhaps living your own life this way is the best outcome for both of you. Who got out? Good ending. Four out of two. Okay, or two out of four, technically. It should be bad for different worlds. Who got out? Who got out? Now, I know you guys are going to be mad at me. I'm going to do get the rest of the endings in another episode. This is what I got. If you ever want to see somebody play this game, by all means, go ahead and uh, play this game or go watch the other playthroughs and stuff. I can't do like super long playthroughs on my laptop right now, but eventually I'll be a big YouTuber and I'll have an awesome computer and I'll be playing this plus more on my thing. So thank you guys so much for joining me on my journey of becoming a big YouTuber. Thank you guys for joining the family. I love you guys so much. And praise me in the comments because I got out. Y'all always talk about me when I be doing this with killers. But guess what? This killer let me go. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Boy, you got out. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Peace and love. Stay safe out there, everybody. Survival book by Voya. Bye.